Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth as usual. Today I want to talk about Angular template forms and how data binding works with it. So I've been doing a lot of Vue the last few years, less so Angular, but I still work with Angular clients and I seem to think I remember how everything works, but sometimes the two get a little confused. So I was talking with a client recently and he's using template forms and as he composed those into individual components and he was doing all this event bubbling in order to get information at the root components up to the form itself. And I thought there has to be a better way. This led me down a rabbit hole to understand better how binding works in Angular and how RxJS don't really solve the problem I was trying to solve. Luckily, Twitter came to the rescue, and I found the magic string that would do the work, but I'm still puzzled why reactivity doesn't work exactly the way I would expect it to work in a spot framework. Let's take a look at the code. So let's start out. I have this fairly simple Angular application, and I have a problem. But let's talk about how it works just really briefly. So I'm not using routing, I'm not using NGRX or any of that. It's just a pretty simple template-based form that I want to work. In fact, here is the ugliest Angular app that exists, but it is a working example. It has some information here about the person that's made the purchase, and then it has a list of orders and then a list of items in those orders. And it's pretty simple, and I'm able to detect from the template whether it's dirty or not. So when I make a change, it'll think it's dirty, and so I'll know whether it's actually changed or not. Now I tried doing this with some diff objects inside of Angular, and I sort of hit a roadblock because what I was trying to do was a little different. The interesting part about how this works, let's refresh it so it goes back to dirty equals false, is anywhere in the tree that I make a change, because this is just a simple hierarchy that I'll show you in a minute. But if I change this to, let's say, 25, you'll see that it made it dirty, even though I'm making the change way down in the nested part of the form. And so I wanted to simply do that. And so let's take a look at the actual data. And the actual data is just this hierarchy. Notice there's the main object, it has an address, it has orders. Each of these orders has a list of items. Really super simple form, right? We've all done this sort of forms over data in Angular before. But the problem came when I was trying to refactor it. I was working with a client and they were doing some what felt like crazy hacks in order to make this work the way they wanted to. And so let's see what actually happens here. Get person just returns the data. In this case, it's just a person. And, and for my example, I'm not even calling a service or anything. I'm doing super simple. It's just creating an instance of that data so I can sort of show that. And then I have some code in here just to hide and show the data just so the page doesn't become crazy big as I'm trying to work with it. Most of the hard work is done over here in the HTML, and that's where I'm binding with ng-model to each part of our form. And remember, it works right now because we have all of the form in this one giant form, right? We have all of the ng-models and all the controls, a simple HTML in here. But because my customer wanted to be able to reuse some elements, I immediately talked to him about creating components. And so my first step there was to actually create an address component. And so let's just look at the address view component. It's super simple. In fact, it looks a lot like the embedded markup, right? NG model, everything's the same. Only difference is I'm inputting an address, giving it a name, etc. So if we come back here, let's comment out our address and let's use this component. This component's already been registered with the module. In fact, I'll just show you the module. Here we can see that the address view component is already registered and we've got the ones for order and order item as well, but we'll get to that in a minute. I just want to show you I'm using those. And so if I get rid of that and I just do the address and then let's bind the address to person.address, right? So we should get the same experience. If we look at this, we can see the city and state are being created, but these are coming specifically from a component. Let's change your component just to ensure that that's what we're actually doing here. And I'll just say style equals background color. And let's make it just barely gray. Come back here. So we can see this is the component now, just to ensure we are. And what happens if we make a change? Dirty isn't being changed. Is it not wired up correctly? In fact, if I look at the data, 
Well, see, ATL, ATL. It is binding correctly and modifying it. Just the form no longer is connected to know that this NG model binding is affecting the dirty. And that's because in the case of template forms, the form is the only thing that knows about change. The objects themselves don't. And this really caught me because I've been doing a lot of Vue in the last few years and less and less Angular, to be perfectly honest with you. And so my initial reaction was, well, we should just be able to get an event from our object because clearly it's going to be a reactive object. And this brought up an interesting point where as Vue 3 is really pushing towards this model where you can make the data reactive and therefore you can get these sort of events and change notifications and things. Uh, but they're relying on some code to do that. They're wrapping it in refs or rack, wrapping it in proxies to make that work. And clearly some other components, including Vue's version of Redux, Vuex, or if you look at NGRX inside of Angular, they sort of take a different approach. And that is they're going to control how change happens, how those mutation of that data is. And so these are two ideas, frankly, a bit at odds. And so... I'm still not sure where this will flesh itself out. Clearly, by making the objects simple objects here, we're relying on the control structure to tell us about these changes as we need them. And that's fine, I think. But I did want to get this to work. I didn't want to go, well, it all has to be part of one form. And luckily, I had a lot of help on Twitter. And I'll include a thank you in the notes, because I don't remember their name all of a sudden. I have to go look it up. Um, they had the magic piece. And this magic piece was not obvious to me. I never ran into it on Stack Overflow. I never ran into it in the docs. Luckily, someone had delved deeper than I had. And so the magic actually is this piece, view providers. Essentially, we're telling the address component here that we want to provide the control container to the existing form that it's inside of. So it does rely on our address being inside of this form. And this form becomes the single form of truth about dirty or pristine or those other properties that know about whether the underlying data has changed. And so by doing that, just including those view providers, provide our control container into the ng form, what happens? This just starts to work. And so in that same vein, I was curious whether it worked completely hierarchically, if that's a, I'm not even sure that's a word, but, and so I came back over here and I wanted to do the same thing. So let's take our order view here and I'm gonna comment it out. Of course I'd put a little embedded in there. So let me do this just so I can comment it out correctly. And I'm gonna replace this with a control just called order and the order is the order, right? I've just created the same idea with order where I just have order as an input and then I'm doing that same ng binding and inside of it, I'm binding to the order item as well. And on both of these, I'm providing that view providers. Now this first level we know works because of the address, but will the second level of items work where I've also done adding that view providers? Probably because we're telling it to take this control container and essentially make sure it's part of the form. That's what this view provider essentially is doing. There's some more technical specifics with what it's doing, but if you take it sort of in faith, that's what it's supposed to do. Our form doesn't really change, right? But it allows us to go back to having the dirty flag work. And still that underlying data is being changed because we can see that just kind of goes to 0.01 here and we're able to do everything we want, computed values, everything while maintaining the connection to the outside form, which is ultimately the thing that my client wanted to use because he was using a lot of embedded forms. And so this proved two things to me that I wanted to share. One is that anyone can have these gaps in knowledge. So don't be afraid to ask people and bug people on Twitter. It's a good idea. The other piece is that it doesn't matter how far down you go, because if we look at this, remember that here I'm just having a singleton, a one-to-one -one relationship between the parent and the child. And then here I'm having a one-to-many relationship with the number of orders, and then inside the order item object, let me grab that HTML, we're also doing a one-to-many here. And so 
As long as we follow that pattern of providing our control container up to the form, we can get all of this stuff to work without having to live with that one giant HTML, which ultimately is something I want to avoid in order to make testing easier, in order to make editing easier, so that you're really using components, even if you don't reuse them a ton. Whereas here, the address part of the form or the order part of the form, we may actually use on different pages. And so we gain some benefit there. Anytime I have a control that's all that long, I want to break it up into subcomponents almost always. And this sort of allows that fix. But it also includes one piece of information, and that is there really isn't a solid way to do reactivity within an object graph in Angular. And that's by design, I think. And so think about it in that way that you're going to rely on the framework to be able to monitor and, and, and track those changes. I hope you're able to learn a little bit, and if you got stuck one day writing your own components, maybe this helped you. I don't know. But this has been another coding short. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like it, or downvote it and let me know in the comments what you don't like. I'm always up for changing what I'm doing, and uh, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time on Coding Shorts. <laughs>